Hey, Tim Sykes here. Uh, thank you for all the well wishes. I'm still feeling like crap. Um, it's tough for me to catch up, you know, while trading from Asia, doing charity in the day, trading at night. Uh, lots of trades popping up all of a sudden. So I'll get better. You know, it just takes time. Um, but I'm pushing through it. You know, I can't wait for the weekend. Normally, I, I look forward to weekdays because then I can trade and teach. But weekend, I can rest a little. So I'm, I'm like limping to the end of this year. Um, but you know, two good trades this morning, uh, for New York time. I know it's, it's all messed up when I'm trading from, from the other side of the world, but in the morning, understand I'm always on New York time. This is, you know, the gift and the curse of, of traveling and, and trading from everywhere. Um, I'm always on New York time. So when I say morning, I know some people get confused. I'm talking about morning New York time, just to be clear. Um, so in the morning, I was looking forward to GLYC spiking more. You know, this is a, a solid uh, multi-month breakout. Uh, first green day, you know, not an OTC, but I think, you know, sometimes OTC patterns can work on, on NASDAQ plays. As you can see, it's not as volatile as I like. I mean, even though it, it ran up from 60 cents to 240, you know, four times your money, it took one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days to go up four times. I don't have that patience if you follow me for any extended period of time. Um, so now we have a nice breakout. Uh, today looks to be a little red, I think, probably because yesterday was just such a big green day. Um, this stock isn't used to moving so fast. But I bought it on the breakout, um, and I sold it right near the open, locked in, um, around 600 700 bucks uh, a little disappointing but again not an otc not a hugely volatile name um, by the end of this video i i want you to leave a comment underneath um, because i'm going to review you know this trade and then also a faster trade on veng it's it's interesting that both of them i made like six seven hundred bucks which do you prefer do you prefer slow um trades like this um you know, where I, I basically made like 6% overnight, um, not like a, a, a perfect trade. I didn't sell at the top. I didn't buy at the bottom. Just like taking the meat of the move on a first green day breakout, um, pretty pretty textbook stuff. Um, and they had news of insider buying. I, I wanted more insider buying, you know, like um, last time, part of the reason why I bought, if you click the link that I, I posted, um, this guy, Rock Edwin, uh, is the guy who, who bought it on the 22nd, but it gets reported a few days later. So the reason why it ran up so much on Wednesday near the open was because uh, this big insider buy was re reported Tuesday night after hours. So you have to understand there's like a little bit of a time delay, but this isn't the first time Rock Edwin bought. Um, Rock Edwin also bought on November 14th. Um, you know, he's putting some serious money involved here. He's the chief medical officer. So when you have a medical company and the chief medical officer is just buying straight up shares, that's a really good sign, especially when there's a multi-day, multi-month breakout. Um, you know, this was reported on the 16th. So that was right here. <coughs> Sorry, I'm going to cough and sneeze and you'll, you'll understand how I'm not feeling great. Um, you know, full transparency. I know you don't want to hear about it, but it's important because I'm trying to show you my process when I'm trading from the other side of the world, when I'm sick, when I'm healthy, all of this impacts your trading. You know, some people are like, just stick to the charts, just stick to the setup. No, trading is about a bunch of things in your health, your mindset, your trading setup all matter. So I'm going to talk about it. I'm not complaining. I'm just going to talk about it. Um, anyways, there's a history here with GLYC when the insider buy is reported um, and it spikes for three days. And, you know, he wasn't the only one. There were a few um, insider buys uh, reported on uh, the 14th. One, was it one, two, three, four, five. So there were actually five buys, you know, chief business officer, uh, head of research, CEO, chief finance all like everyone's buying on november november 11th really but then it gets reported on the 14th so this whole run-up you know this is the 14th 
like, okay, it's already spiking a little bit. Um, I'm sure whatever caused them to buy, whether it was good news or whatever, uh, whether it was public or non-public, I don't care. You know, uh, there's all these conspiracy theories like, oh, the insiders are getting rich. They're screwing the common man. Shut up. Who cares? Okay. If there's good news, the insiders are buying, the public can buy, you know, when you recognize the power of insider buying, like, especially when there's multiple insiders, it's not just like one person. And they're all doing pretty much the same trade. They think that the company is undervalued. So that's what led to this whole November run up. And that's why I thought that, you know, frankly, I, I thought it would have a little more juice today because this is the first green day, you know, right now as I'm filming this in the morning, um, 10.30 a.m. New York time on the 29th. The NASDAQ is up 2%. You know, it's a bounce day. Um, and you have insider buying and also record volume. But it's just not doing much. I mean, it's up 3%, you know. But I sold at the open because, again, this is where it comes in where, <coughs> excuse me, um, I'm not feeling great. So I don't want to sit here and watch this all day. That's why I bring this up. You don't have to sell at the open. I'm telling you why I'm going to be extra quick with my trades today because I want to go take a nap. Um, so, you know, you tell me, do you like this kind of, you know, overnight trade, slow breakout with a news catalyst, but very you know, simple, logical setup, or do you like this trade? Um, this was my f much faster, again, same roughly like 6%, nothing huge, um, much faster morning panic dip buy on VENG. Again, both of these are multi-month runners. Um, you want to focus on, you know, multi-month, multi-day, multi-month runners if you can. They have more predictable patterns rather than, you know, like these one-day runners where, Everyone gets so excited because it's, you know, one day runners can spike two, three, five hundred percent, but they're very choppy. I prefer multi month runners because they have predictable patterns. What do I look for on a play like this? I know it's a little higher priced than what I normally do, but this is following the seven step framework to a T. I dip by morning panics, and we got a beauty of a panic here. Um, before I talk about my trade, understand I'm in chat and, you know, I, I alert not just my trades, but my whole thinking. It's like a stream of consciousness. Um, and this is why, frankly, you should get into, you know, my challenge. Uh, you get the webinars, you get the DVDs, you get the video lessons. Um, I'll post a link to the challenge below. There's a whole separate chat room where all my millionaire students and I are talking. And you can see this green. This is my commentary. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at SMMT right at the open. You know, no follow through, hopefully panic to dip by. At 9.33, I say, V-E-N-G, I need more panic. Okay, this is right here. And it's dropping a little bit, but again, I want the biggest morning panics to dip by. If you know my pattern, this is my pattern. I've linked this blog post a million times. I'll link it a million more. You look for this kind of little panic at the open because with penny stocks, with promoted stocks, there lies in inefficiency. Stop losses get taken out. Um, market makers let the thing just drop before they collect, they pick up the pieces. You know, newbies who use stop losses. Like, I can just imagine the newbies where they're like, okay, I'll put my stop loss at 20 and, you know, I'll protect myself. Like the books say, I don't know why they have that voice, but like, you know, it's up, for, it's up to 25 and I, I can guarantee you that people put their stop losses at 20. Newbies like round numbers for stop losses. And it's the dumbest, dumbest thing because just because you put a stop loss, A, doesn't mean that you're going to get that price. And B, the market makers see where all the newbies stop losses are. And they love taking them out and then putting the stock right back. So again, this is why I teach. I see so many just dumb, boneheaded newbie mistakes. But it's always going to happen. I don't teach that many people. Um, you know, it's crazy. <coughs> trades like this are you know you have to be very fast you can't have a big account like you know maybe make a few thousand dollars max so it's like a a small little window of opportunity it goes back to me you know i, I should have highlighted this tweet from jack kellogg or i don't know if it was a tweet or in the chat room but like one of my top students jack kellogg um has gravitated out of otcs and he's moved to like trading like triple leverage ETFs and he has like plus or minus $50,000 days. Um, you know, it's more exciting, more practice. Uh, it's more scalable because now he has, you know, 10 plus million in the bank. 
So it's a good big account strategy, but he's also had, you know, six figure losses. He's down like a million in the past month or so. Like it's much riskier. And I said, come back to OTCs, Jack. And he said, no, you can only make five or 10K a day down there. And it's funny to me because I know how much five or 10K a day would mean to the average person watching this, but my top students now look down on five or 10K a day. They've become like money snobs. And I get it. Like you have a big account, you know, they're hanging with all these like big traders. The big traders always make fun of me. Like, oh, Tim Sykes, you know, he scalps for like little, little amounts. I get it. I'm, I'm aware of the industry. But at the same time, I just wish that I could bridge the gap between, you know, traders who look down on making five or 10K a day and all the rest, the many millions more people who would love to make five or 10K, not even in a day, but in a year. Like I see the giant divide. So for me, I'm going to teach how to make five or 10K or if you have a smaller position or if you're, you don't know, trade it perfectly, you know, 500 or a thousand in a day. That's still amazing money. Like it's, it's crazy to me. There's like this, this two, two different societies in the trading world. All the big traders make fun of me. You have to understand that. And I'm okay with that. I've made peace with it. Um, because again, I'm helping the little guy. So I get it. Like for them, trading is, you know, making millions, Red Bull, Coke, traveling the world. Look, I, I've, I've been in the Red Bull phase, no Coke, but I've been in the Red Bull phase. I've been in the traveling the world phase. I get that world. But at the same time, 99.99% of you should not be trading SQQQ, you know, even if it is volatile. Okay. This is like the triple leverage ETF. Um, there's so much liquidity, there's so much volatility, but not on a percentage basis. On a percentage basis, you should focus on plays like VENG, okay? This morning panic pattern happens. You get the quick panic and then you get the bounce. It's not always like exact like this. You know, I, I include a bunch of different examples. This is, understand, these are from video lessons like five, 10, 15 years ago. Some people are like, I don't wanna study your old dated stuff. It's the same pattern guys it's the same freaking pattern I, I literally feel like i'm taking crazy pills i've been teaching now for 15 years and people just don't want to pay attention because again the people with small accounts aren't the best students they're not the most meticulous that's why they have small accounts but i do believe i can reach some of you and the more millionaires i create you know the more video lessons the more real-time examples you start to see it uh by the way this is what i i uh you know, had to deal with, by the way, this guy said, I call, I call BS on my trade. I posted my trade. This is my trade, by the way. And I got to explain all this stuff. I know you just want to understand the, the chart and the ticker. I need you to understand the whole industry. The more you understand all the angles, the better you will do. And, you know, you might understand why, like if it's your dad or your brother or your fiance or your wife or your husband hating on me or penny stocks, it's because there's not much money and you have to be quick and you have to be meticulous. If you're not quick and not meticulous, you will lose. If you are gullible, like most people with promoted stocks and penny stocks, you will lose. So they're not wrong that most penny stocks are scammed. They're not wrong that most traders lose. The difference is I'm teaching how to change from being a loser to a winner. And I'm not even the best trader, okay? Look at this. This is, <coughs> oh my God, I I didn't even link this right. Hold on. I got to edit this. I, I, I was trying to link the freaking blog post. Oh my God. I'm missing Y's in my keyboard. That's ridiculous. Did I not link it? Yeah. So I try to link this blog post so that everyone reads it. I, I, I screwed it up. Anyways, um, this guy literally said, you know, like, where was it? Oh, it was the other, other one. Hold up. Let me pause this a second. All right. This guy literally says that I'm, I'm BSing. And I said, I love my doubters and haters. I don't realize I called it all the way before I traded in chat and attached a photo of executions, not to mention it's a perfect example of my morning panic pattern, but I've learned some people are just absolutely helpless. And this is true. Okay. I'm sorry to be cruel. 
Um, I'm sorry to be blunt, but like literally this is what I said in chat. Let's go back to this. At the open, <coughs> you can hear how good I sound, right? At the open, I said I need more panic. It wasn't panicking enough. 9.36 a.m., I say, okay, panic, come on, under 20. Why would I say under 20? Because, again, I know that's where the stop losses are. Um, the best panics happen around key numbers where there's a lot of stop losses. That, that creates max panic because that's where the market makers are looking to take out all the stop losses and create panic, and that's where the market makers are usually going to bounce it. So around key numbers, like $20 a share, it's very important to look how it acts. And with this one, you had to be quick. It did drop to the 18s, okay? Um, you can see on my trade, you know, I, I attached the little E-Trade execution just because I know people are going to say you didn't really get it. I got 500 shares at 1881. I also had other orders in. Um, I was trying to get 2,000 shares. Um, remember, you know, I might have taken like a what, nine, ten thousand dollar position, but I mean, I, I can put millions to work if I if I want to. This isn't the play to put millions to work, but like whether I got 500 executed or 2,000 executed, literally makes zero difference. You just had to be so quick, um, and. You know, we're, we're talking about seconds. That's why some people are going to be like, yeah, Tim, but you didn't alert this. It was literally seconds. And this is why, you know, before I even make a trade, I want you to understand my commentary. I need you to understand the whole pattern. It's not just my trade. My trade is last. It's all about, are you prepared? Do you understand the pattern? Do you understand how quick it has to be? Look at this. This is a 936. I said, come on, under 20. 937. I said, watch. VENG, it's glorious. Okay, um, this is right here when it when it did take out twenty, and this is why I I comment in chat. This is why I donate all my trading profits to charity because it makes no difference whether I win or lose on my personal trade. I want to show you the process. Okay, some people say you don't need to talk about the charity. We get it, Tim. You're a good man. You're fishing for compliments. No. A, I want you to donate some of your trading profits or income to charity. I think it's good. But B, I need you to understand that unlike all these other traders where they're trying to like use their chat room to create profits for themselves, I don't do that. It makes zero difference to me whether I make 600 on the trade or lose 600. Obviously, I want to donate more. But because I donate 100% to charity, it allows me to be completely unbiased in my commentary. This is why we do this. It's actually been really amazing um, where, you know, all I need to do is give blunt, honest commentary. And you can see here, you know, I'm saying watch it under 20. Again, going back to the key level where they're going to take out the stop losses. I say watch it. It's glorious. I'm not saying trade it, okay? Understand, you have to make up your own minds. All my top students are self-sufficient, but I want you watching it and seeing it in person. And going back to the question I asked at the beginning of this video, which do you prefer? Do you like slower trades like GLYC, which develop, you know, overnight? Or do you like fast, you know, morning panics or morning spikes like VENG? You tell me. Leave a comment below. I'm curious. Maybe it's both. Maybe it's neither. There's no one right answer. Anyways, I say, you know, watch it. It's glorious. Um, then I say, you know, I got it. This is like two minutes later. And I said, too quick to alert. I got it at 19-ish. I didn't even know my exact execution. <coughs> I put in like four orders. I wish I was doing a live webinar. But as you can hear, I'm not really healthy enough to do a live webinar. I'm going to try tomorrow. We'll see. I might be coughing throughout the whole thing. Um, but look at this. There's other students doing it completely on their own. Himini is actually shorting it. I think uh, Clay Ruff was also shorting it. Um, Jay Jez missed it. Andrew filled a 20. Sawati nailed it, 1820 to 1980. That's that's very similar to me. The Lost Nomad, only 25 shares. But again, you know, $1.50 a share, okay? And then GOTU also, like, you know, it's cool to look in chat. Like, GOTU also had a morning panic and bounce. Like, there's, there's so many opportunities if you're prepared. It, it astounds me. GOTU actually, you know, bounced even nicer and has more liquidity. So I, I missed that one. Um, you know, Moonshot made a nice little 200 bucks. Anyways, 
and I'm, I'm putting out typos because I'm literally just trying to like, you know, type this stuff. So forgive me if I, if I do typos, but long story short, perfect morning panic and bounce. What made me buy in the 18s? Um, I know I'm going to get this question. I posted a video the other day of a perfect turn with a morning panic on SHMP. I'll link that video lesson underneath. You should watch it. Um, I probably should have gotten this live on video, but again, I'm not feeling that great. Uh, but, you know, there were a lot of sellers here in the 18s, and it dropped so fast, and the bid solidified in the 18s. So you have about two to three seconds to put it in an order when the bid solidifies, and that tells you that the market makers are, you know, buying it. I would have loved this to go from 25 to 12. You know, the, the bigger the panic, the bigger the potential bounce. But as you can see here, from 18 to the 24s, I mean, there was a $6 a share bounce in here. I'm not going to hold on that long because I don't have the patience. And also, this one's a little scary. Let me just bring it up here. Oh, look at this. GOYC is back to the 280s. Nice little bounce there. Uh, VENG sometimes has a nasty spread. You can see here it's a $0.40 cent spread. <clears throat> and look at this, the volume's only half a million after like an hour of trading. So it might do like a million on the day. It's not the most liquid play. Um, that's why, you know, big accounts can't do it. Uh, but again, this is where you can use your small account to your advantage. If you're prepared, if you understand $20, like a key level, I don't know where the stop losses are. I just know how newbies think and I know how market makers think. And at $20 a share, that is... You know, I can only imagine how many newbies think that they're they're long this for days or weeks and they think they're protecting themselves. Oh, I'll just use a stop loss at 20. I can just think how proud of themselves they are. They don't realize that they're just, you know, cannon fodder for the market makers to use for their own delight. And the thing just dropped below and, and 20 was, you know, you put a stop loss at 20, you're still not going to necessarily get executed at 20. You probably get executed at 19.5 or the 19s. That's the worst time to exit. So pretty perfect morning panic and bounce. Remember VENG, this has done this before. We had the big run up, panic, bounce, panic, bounce, panic, bounce, panic. What's next? So <laughs> it's not perfect every time. It's scary to try to catch a falling knife. It's not the most liquid. So like I understand if you're scared of this, and maybe you just want, you know, a safer play like GLYC, like a, a less volatile, less stressful play. Uh, leave a comment below. Tell me which you prefer. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting to me that there's like literally two ways. Which one? Hold on. I'm trying to show both trades. I have too many windows open. Right. Uh, there's two ways to make a little over 600 on the day. And I did not hold for you know what was it a four or five dollar a share did i say six dollar a share maybe even close to a six dollar a share bounce on veng what did i took like a dollar and a half so i got like a quarter of the bounce which is fine i'm not going to be aggressive on this especially given the way that i feel um you know but it's it's funny to me i got a quarter of my position size a quarter of the gains that i wanted and i'm still making a few hundred bucks like that's a good strategy the problem that many of you have is like you're trying these strategies where you have to be perfect. And if you're not perfect, you get obliterated. With this strategy, if you're anywhere in the vicinity, execution-wise, size-wise, time-wise, like there's really a, a bigger room, uh, you know, a bigger margin of error. More room for, for error in case you don't get a full position. And if you were, you know, similar only got like a small position or if you miss the execution it's okay there will be others whether it's the same play or not glyc if you miss it there will be others it's all a question of how well prepared will you be for these morning panics how well prepared will you be for these multi-month breakouts are you ready to capitalize have you studied the past enough so again post a comment below which do you prefer slower less stressful trades or the faster adrenaline rush uh plays that can pay off you know i didn't i didn't time either of them perfectly really actually missed a lot on veng but i'm gonna go take a nap now hopefully this video helps you bye